Hey guys, I'm Blue. And this episode is about imagination. I'm hanging out with the youngsters at AIM. Now I'm totally pumped about this opportunity because even the old cats are talking about how important imagination is now. Harvard's talking about it, the Deutsche Bank. They're all saying automation and robots are gonna mean that, that the only thing that human beings can, can really take forward is gonna be our imagination and creativity. And today we're gonna to go in and hear some speeches from the first ever presidents of imagination. And our first up person is Dean Tuma. So Dean, how are you feeling about today's speech and becoming the president of imagination for three minutes? Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. It's a bit laggy. How are you feeling about being the president of imagination today? Okay, we might come back to Dean. We might throw to Sharon's video. Dean, we'll come back to you in a second. And we're gonna go over okay. to Sharon in Uganda who's done a speech as the president of Imagination. So let's go to Sharon's video. Knock, knock, hello. Knock, knock, hello. My name is Kakuba Sharon from Tepco High School, Uganda. I'm 14 years old and is free. We are all poor and rich can, can get access. Because today, poor stay poor because they don't have access to education. And rich, compared to the rich people who, are accept, who have access to education. I want to see a world where everyone is equal and has equal opportunity to success, no matter race, white or black, no matter gender, male or female, or all the girl child and the female, all the girl child and the boy child. Because together we can make a difference. I know, me and you. And in my future world, there is no discrimination, no. I want to see a world where there is responsible consumption, where life in water, on land, and in air is respected. But what do I mean by saying this? Many people, many people disrespect their life in water, forgetting that there is also life below the water, they dispose human waste in their water bodies. This may lead to water pollution, this may lead to water pollution and death of sub-aquatic animals like fish, sharks, yet they attract tourists in this world. Polluting the land by littering, the, by littering it, dumping waste everywhere we want, plastic bags, polythene papers, plastic bottles, forget that it may lead to poor crop yields, making the farmers to cry. The air is also polluted from the fume, from the industrial industrial fumes. They expose the fumes, which may lead to respiratory diseases. To put my imagination in action, hey, as a big girl, a rapper, an MC, a poet, a writer, a future doctor, treating the sick, the sick, I will use dance poetry, rap to inspire the young, the adults, those who are listening to me and who are seeing me. To work hand in hand, to fight and see a change and see my future world. I call it a well of creativity because it's where the creative people will be born by that time. Work hard, work hard and fight with me to see and reach in this better world. Ciao. Hello, everybody. Um, hello, everyone. It's good to be back on Imagination TV. Thank you to my friend Blue for, for kickstarting the conversation. We've had some great comments online. Uh, Cameron Northey, let's go. Um, yes. Uh, Keen for the speeches, awesome eyelashes, Blue, I'll pass it on to Blue. And we're, we're very excited to have just listened to Sharon, who's a 14-year-old student at Tropical High School in Uganda, part of the AIM program there where we're working on 
kids' imaginations and, and building them up and rewriting their stories. Great to have a comment from Philip over in America. Troy Kelly, preach at Sharon. Um, yeah, it was brilliant. Sharon for president of Imagination, you go girl. I agree, Georgie. Um, we're really, really happy to have you all here today. This is our first time of working with the youngsters. So we're having a little bit of internet difficulty in some areas as we're trying to work out how to make this all work. So we're gonna try and see if we can get Dean to do his speech via audio. And if it doesn't quite work out, we're gonna give Dean the chance to be able to share his speech with you all via the YouTube chat room. And then you can give him some props and, and a bit of love there. So Dean, can you hear me? Oh, uh, yes, I can. Over to you, buddy. Let's hear okay. your speech as the president of Imagination. Okay, as a student in the public education system, I feel it is my responsibility to ensure that education and opportunities for young people to learn and grow is provided. I increase by I intend doing this by funding the education sector. This tablet, classroom upgrades, internet access <clears throat> and sporting equipment. Second thing on my agenda is decreasing homelessness in our country. We will provide shelters, food, and job opportunities for these unfortunate people to earn money. To intend on increasing both the issues via education in schools and workplaces, via meetings, events, and television documentaries. We live in a diverse country that welcomes people from all over the world. It is in our strength to in on earth. Finally, as a proud Uwalio man, it is important that I work with all states and territories to make sure our rich Aboriginal culture is embraced and held in our in the highest regard. We are a proud people with millions of years of history. History is key. Thank you for listening. Let's work together to imagine not just a better country, but a better world. Thank you. Dean, thank you so much. If we jump to the chat line, Luna Tune said, holy smokes, yes, Dean. Chloe Bishop said, killing it, Dean. Jason Burton said, youngster bringing solutions. Kalisha Rhodes said, deadly with two exclamation marks. Fiona Bailey said, Dean the visionary. Angus Gallagher says, says, Dean has my vote. So thank you for working through those technological challenges with us. And Bruz, thank you for being someone who stands up and who believes in things and, and keep sharing your voice. Know that there's lots of people out there that, that believe in, in kids like you and I believe in you, Dean, and you definitely have my vote as a president for Imagination. So thanks for joining us today on Imagination TV. Our next segment we're moving into now is the Chaos Classroom. So we've got, this is an experiment. Let's see how we go. Um, we're gonna hopefully have five kids from across Australia and we're going to take part in a seven minute uh, challenge as we move through the topic of imagination and try and work through that lesson. So before we get there, I'd love to hear from you on the, the YouTube chat line. And just to remind everyone who's tuning in for the first time or who was here yesterday, we are making this show to be able to go out to the billion kids that are going to be affected by COVID-19 and they're going to be stuck at home. We want to put a mentor in these kids' life every single day to be able to ensure they have guides through these tough times and be able to ensure that we can also keep learning and keep improving together. The only reality is the reality we have and we can either choose to adapt to that reality and to work out how to make it work for us or we can struggle with it and not find the solution. So we wanna be part of the solution. We wanna work with teachers, with broadcasters and with an incredible unlikely alliance of people all around the world to ensure that as many kids get a mentor in their life every single day for the upcoming period. If you want to support our work, um, you can grab one of these imagination hoodies by jumping on the homepage of aimmentoring.com. Uh, there may be a little bit of a slight delay in some of the shipping as we work through it, but we'll get it out to you. 
special shout out to our pedestrian uh, friends who are going to buy a bulk order. So thanks to Anna and the crew there. And anybody that wants to buy a bulk order, we can sort you out as well to keep this show going and keep our work going to get a mentor in every kid's life every single day. And if you want to make a donation on the website, $5, $10, $15, jump on the AIM website and, and support the show to keep going. And, and we'd love to keep working with you. Okay, we're now going to move into the chaos classroom and we have our students here. So we have Chloe, Kalani, Liam, Lucy and Gemma. Let's get the classroom started. Chloe, what is imagination? Imagination can be anything. Uh, me personally, it belongs with everyone and everyone can have their own opinion about it. Uh, can be from being really small to really old and everyone kind of has their own aspects about it. Mine is to have equal opportunities for everyone and to make everyone one because our generation is the one that is going to try and make everything succeed and change things in life. Chloe, I love that answer. And now I'm going to give you an assignment. Uh, for the next five minutes, you have to come up with a cookbook set of ingredients for how to make imagination. Between five to ten ingredients, write it down, and then we'll, we'll hear from you at the end of the classroom. Kalani, tell me, what would imagination look like if we were to draw it? Um, I think it's mainly an art. A lot of art, you know, yourself an artist and, and a lot of kids. Uh, the mob from AIM are artists and I think a lot of art shows our imagination but at least for me I can't draw for the life of me I, I let you mobs do that for me so I do it through you know designing things and, and making things in a, you know like th um, in the 3D world like 3D printing and and things like that that's my art um, but I know for a lot of people it's definitely definitely um when you draw when you draw and when you express yourself through art it's something like that it's something that makes people feel welcomed can you tell me kalani the first time in your life when you actually thought that maybe you had an imagination and that you could use it can you remember that time or around that time oh that's a that's a very good question i'd say i would say probably back when i first got a lego set uh, when I first got my first Lego set, it was something that you're like, whoa, I can, I can build this. And then, you know, still to this day, I love Lego and I still, I still buy it every now and then. But I think when you build something and you make something, at least for me, I think that's something that's really uh, empowering and making something is when you, when I, at least for myself, really, you know, make myself feel like I've got an imagination. It's such an important message right now, Kalani, for so many teachers, I think, because this jump into going into a digital world is so scary because they've only ever stood up the front of a classroom. And I think the only way to start it is to start building it. So we actually have um, two of the guys working on the production behind the scenes, Bevis and Xavier, who kind of volunteered but kind of got told to, um, to create a how-to, you know, create this show. So they're going to they're work on how to go digital behind the scenes and... And the biggest thing we've learned in the last five days is you just got to start building, which is just like with Lego. You grab one block, you put it down, you start building, you break it, you remake it, and you keep going. The pieces always fall again, and you can always start again after that. Lucy Brown, are you there on the screen? And we'd love to hear from you as to how you define imagination. Hi, Jack. Um, I have to say that imagination can be whatever you want it to be. If you're talking about imagination in art, Art is, it, just think of colour, it's, it's you. Imagination is, or well, it's up to you to define what you think imagination is. To me, imagination is a way to escape reality, a way to be something else. I had to, a, oh, sorry, Lucy. Okay. Oh, that's okay, I'm, I'm good now. Um, good. You made me think of a friend of mine who's currently um, and lives, lives and works out of Kenya. And he said, you know, for some kids, like for some of the kids in the refugee camps that he takes photos of, he's a war correspondent as well as working with us. He says, for some kids, all, all you're ever going to have is imagination. You know, no matter how much hard work you have after that, imagination is one way you can escape reality and you can, you can go to a place and maybe have joy in your life and smile and tell stories. And I think, again, for all of us during this time, imagination is a tool that we can flex. And I agree with you um, as to what you shared there. Chloe, how's our ingredients going? What have you got? Oh, I'm pretty good. So I've decided to do Imagcake, 
which has three cups of laughter, one tablespoon of sugar, one cup of white, might be a bit messy, and a dash of sprinkles so far. Perfect. Perfect. And have we got uh, Gemma or Liam, have either of you jumped back on the call? Okay, I'll come back to you, Lucy. If you were teaching a classroom right now online, what would be your three tips to teachers? My three tips to teacher to teachers, did you say? Yeah. Don't try to force something on a student to be to learn something or to to learn something when they teach children to be themselves. To know how instead of teaching them all this stuff that overwhelms them, teach them stuff that's gonna benefit them. Give them a a reason to want to keep going further. Lucy, I think that is a perfect moment to wrap up our seven minute chaos classroom. Thank you three for joining us um, and jumping on. Thanks for all your views. Keep using imagination, keep being bold and brave. It was a pleasure talking to you all and we'll catch you all soon. Thanks for dropping by. And now we have our artist segment. So we're gonna to chat to our young artists of the week and we're actually gonna to chat to a couple of artists today. We're gonna to chat to Jordan Smith first. And Jordan, have we got you there? Yeah, hey, Jack, I'm here. Hi, Jordan, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, really good. Tell me, what, what does art mean to you? Art is an expression of my imagination. Um, and the things that happen, it's my outlet and kind of how I can show everyone what I'm thinking or feeling at that time. Have you got any examples of your work nearby uh, that you might want to show us? Yeah, I have one. Uh, this is my picture. And how did you paint that? Oh, is that paint or is it, what, what have you done? Um, this one's watercolour. Um, on an A3 piece of paper. It only took me about 20 minutes, but the story behind it is basically, I was in a really dark time and I felt really alone, even though I had people around me. I was losing my friends and stuff was happening in family and I just felt so lost. But I know now that even though when you're feeling like you're lost and you're in a dark time, you're going to be okay. Like it feels like there's nothing you can do, but I promise you, I promise you all, it will be okay. Everything will be fine. Jordan, when you were working through that, was, was that what art was for you? Was that a space to go to, to express yourself? Is that what that painting helped you be able to do? Yeah, that's exactly. Thanks for being so honest with us and, and sharing that. It's, um, you know, as a, my mum's an artist. Um, I think I'm an artist these days or somewhere in the process of it. And, you know, I've, I've watched mum's life and so many artists who find, um, find calmness in creation. And I think your point that everyone is alone at certain points, everyone faces darkness at certain points. We all do that. Um, but what you've shown us all is, is a way to be able to, to try and process it and, and work through, acknowledge it and then um, make sense of it. So thank you so much for joining us on the, the Young Artist of the Week segment and thanks for sharing your work. And if you want to jump on the YouTube chat line, I'm sure everyone would love to give you some props on there as well. So thanks, Jordan. Yeah, thanks, Jack. Bye. Bye-bye. Olivia, we've got your artwork that we're going to have a look at if we haven't had a look at it yet. Um, Thank you for joining us. Tell us about what art means to you and, and what this artwork that you've created, uh, I think it's family growth, what, what the story is behind it. Um, I started making art because I do a lot of sports and I ended up getting injured with stress fractures in my back. My family, we went down to the snow for a couple of weeks and I wasn't actually allowed on the snow. So I ended up turning to art as a way to like, you know, spend my time. Um, this artwork is about my family. I made it because I like to tell my stories the way, like through a visual way, not so much verbally. And it's, I love art. It's the way to express me. And what was it like? Can you remember when, I think we may have made something together. Was it like having your artwork um, turned into, was it a, 
Do we make a, a name? Would you? Is that right? A shirt? Yeah. What was yeah. it like making a shirt? Um, it was so amazing. I got some, some of my friends wear them. It's, it, it's amazing. It's worldwide and it's just everywhere. <laughs> That shirt is worldwide because I know a couple of our mentors in the continent of Africa love that one and are wearing it around. I think Shaka in Kampala wears it quite regularly and some of the crew in Nairobi, which is pretty amazing to see your story travel. And why do you think we tell stories? And, and what's the effect when, as a storyteller when that travels? What does that make you feel? Um, it makes me feel heard. My story's now been given to other people and they can learn from it as well as myself. And it's pretty much a way to communicate with others and make new friends. When you went from having that injury uh, to creating art, what would be your lesson that you can pass on to people that might go, oh, I'm not an artist? Um, what would be your lesson to them or your message to them? Um, my message to them would be just get the pen out, have a little scribble. It might turn into something amazing like this one. This it was just, I was at the bottom of a hill doing some drawing on a piece of paper and that's what came out of it. So just give it a go. Yeah, I love that. Olivia, do you sell your art anywhere? Um, no, I just partner with AIM. <laughs> cool. Okay, well, well, we'll keep that partnership going and then if you ever want to sell it, we'll, we'll make sure we let some people know. So we had Troy Kelly asking, far out, he said, far out, that's sick. Do you, do, do you sell your art? Um, Perul, I love that shirt. Perul, if you want to go to the AIM uh, shop, you can grab one of those shirts. Uh, Jade Simons, oh my God, Liv, she's a Sydney girl. Uh, Brianna, thanks for sharing your story with us, which I think was to both Jordan and to yourself, Liv. Liv, thanks for jumping on um, the show with us. It's been a pleasure to work with you. Keep drawing, keep creating stories. Uh, it inspires all of us. So thanks very much for joining us on Imagination TV. Thanks, Jack. Okay, everybody, that wraps up our show for today. I'm just going to scroll through some of the comments. Um, thank you for lighting up the YouTube chat line. Uh, Bobby Cunningham, Imagination is You, nice Lucy. Uh, these kids, Atlanta Lloyd, these kids are going to change the world one day. You're all incredible. Grace Douglas, that's my kind of cake. I, I agree, I love that cake. Um, Dominic, outstanding mentees, loving this, so proud of courage, no shame at aim. Thank you all for jumping in, for sharing your stories with us, to all of the students that jumped on, to Dean for delivering his speech, for Sharon for delivering her speech as the president of Imagination. Thank you to Chloe, to Kalani, to Lucy for jumping onto the classroom and to our wonderful artists who joined us just at the end there. It was a, it was a great show and it's, it's a really you know, important experience for us to try and make this as open as possible. So to close today, I just want to send a message to all the teachers out there that are, that are struggling with the the fear of what it could look like to go online. Please take on that encouragement of Kalani when he talks about the Lego blocks and start building. There's no greater opportunity than when there's a moment to rewrite the rules. The rules are out, the old rules are out and we're in a very new time and to be courageous and pick up your pen, just like Liv was saying, or your pencil and start sketching a new way. That's the only way we progress is if you start sketching a new way and we just get it done and then we'll fail and we'll all pick ourselves back up together and we'll keep learning. That'll be our commitment to all of you. Thank you for coming together on the YouTube chat line. If you want to support Imagination TV, grab an Imagination hoodie, head to aimmentoring.com. You can grab one in bulk like the pedestrian crew and, and Anna and the team who are doing that. Thank you so much to, to all of our people that are supporting, distributing this from the schools and universities all around the world. And please get in touch if you want to help us get this out to a billion kids around the world so they can have a mentor in their life every single day. We'll catch you tomorrow for the design session. Um, my mum's coming on, plus some other people. So really excited to, to jump into the design session tomorrow at 12 noon, Australian Eastern Daylight Time, and you can watch the replay anywhere around the world. Okay, everyone, look after yourselves. Keep taking care of yourselves. Peace. Oh, my God.